right, so this was a question posted on our NPD Final Frontier app recently, and the question read as, a physical therapist notices that a patient is experiencing early toe off during terminal stance in gait. So that's the keyword right here, early toe off during terminal stance. Which of the following identifies a likely cause, comma, and an appropriate intervention to address that problem? So you're given the problem, which is early toe off. We have to find out the cause, and we have to go one step ahead and find the intervention. So your options are hip flexion contracture and prolonged stretch as an intervention. Option B, hip adductor weakness and progressive strengthening as the treatment. Option C, gastronemius weakness and ultrasound as the intervention. And option D, great toe flexion weakness and progressive strengthening as the intervention. And the correct answer listed is A, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about why A is correct and what we could do to answer these questions on the upcoming NPTE. I'm going to use an example with my hand and my arm. So I'm going to make my left arm as my floor and I'm going to show my right hand as my right foot. So I'll show right heel strike, uh, right foot flat or mid stance, or then right toe off or terminal stance. And I can also draw it here real quick on the bottom part of the screen. So this blue color is my floor and I have a red leg walking and I could do a heel strike. I could do a mid stance and then I would go into terminal stance. So at terminal stance, as you can look, my heel is going to be off the ground and my toe is touching and the question is asking, what are some of the causes for the early toe off during terminal stance? And if you look at this, you can see that the hip has gone into extension. And if we limit the hip from going into proper extension, it's going to cause the toe to lift off earlier than normal gait. And that lack of extension is usually going to be caused by the muscles in the front. So if you look at the interior part of your thigh, your hip flexors, which is usually going to be your iliopsoas or your rectus femoris, if they are tight, if they're tight, that's going to prevent my hip, which my hip wants to go into extension. So it's preventing my hip to go into full extension because of the tightness of the antagonist muscle, which is the hip flexors. So tightness of hip flexors is stopping the hip to go into full extension, which is causing an early toe off during terminal stance in gait. So the correct answer, the first part is hip flexion contracture. And then the second part of the answer is what's the intervention? So to treat a hip flexion contracture, the easiest way you can do that is stretching. Yeah, you can do strengthening of the opposite side of the muscles or you can do the stretching of the same side. So stretching of the hip flexors will be an appropriate intervention. So again, if there's a patient who has an early toe off during terminal stance, it's most likely caused by lack of extension, which is caused by a hip flexion contracture and a prolonged stretch would be a wonderful intervention to address that cause. Now let's look at other options. There are other options which have listed our hip adductor weakness, which is progressive strengthening. But this question is talking about more of a flexion extension. So you have to stay to your plane and you don't have to go and try to find problems in the frontal plane. So that second option would be wrong. And same thing can be used uh, for option C and D where they're saying weakness is one of the causes. So gastronemius for option C and great toe flexion weakness for option D. Both of the causes of weakness are not going to cause an early toe off. An early toe off is usually by limitation in the range of motion and that makes hip flexion contracture as the correct answer. Okay, perfect. Let's go on and do another example to make sure that you understand the concept if it's applied in a different situation. So I'm going to try to do another practice question and this question is going to be, during evaluation, the physical therapist observes a shorter right step length. So what I'm saying here is, now we're changing the question stem a little bit and we want you to think about a shorter right step length. What does that mean? So we'll go back to our floor, we'll we grab the leg and now the person is trying to land and remember step length is the distance from 
a contralateral limb with repeating the same event to the same side limb, which means from left heel strike to right heel strike would be my right step length. So if I'm trying to, let's say my two legs were right next to each other, and now my right leg wants to take a step. So if my right leg wants to take a step, it's going to be landing. It's going to be called loading response or initial contact first, initial contact and then loading response. If that's the case, then what one, what's happening here is we are asking you, what's the most likely reason for this gate deviation? So the reason for this gate deviation is options, Option A, right hip flexor contracture. Option B, right hip extensor contracture. Option C, right AD, AB ductor contracture. And option D is left AD ductor contracture. So again, I can answer this question using the same principle as I used in the previous question. I can first stick to my plane, which means the question is asking about step length, which is we're talking about the sagittal plane. And that means the right adductor or abductor contracture and the left adductor contracture are wrong. So I can erase them and say they are the frontal plane options I want to answer in my sagittal plane. The second thing I can do is I can read the quotient stem and ask about shorter right step length. So now what's happening is my hip wants to go into flexion, but someone is stopping it from going into flexion. So which muscle is going to stop it from going into flexion? the muscle which is opposite. So now I have the hip extensors, which are my gluteus maximus, and you can say hamstrings. If the hip extensors are tight on the same side, they are going to stop me from going into full extension, full flexion, and that's going to cause me a decrease in the step length on the same side. So the correct answer will be, a right hip extensor contracture will cause a right short step length. Okay. So you can see on the bottom of the graph, there are two variations. If my right flexors are tight, I'm going to have to see changes with limited extension on that side, which would be early toe off. And if my right hip extensors are tight, they're going to show changes as depicted in a shorter right step length. Common question uh, I see here is what is the correct answer uh, or how do I make right hip flexor contracture as the correct answer? So hip flexion contracture on the right side is going to mean what? So let's think through it. It's going to mean that the person has a flexion contracture, which means it's not going to allow it to go into extension. And when it doesn't allow it to go into extension, it's not going to have a good push off and in sense, if the right extensor uh, extension is not happening properly, it's going to affect the opposite side. So it's going to affect the left step length. So my left step length will be reduced if I have a right hip flexion contracture. Okay, so that makes A as incorrect. Okay, perfect. I think these two questions between the hip extension contracture on this one and the previous one talking about the hip flexion contracture should help you answer questions like this on the NPDE. Uh, but feel free to ask me any questions and have a great day.